There's a new voice on the airwaves in this western Libyan mountain town, 98.2 FM. The sound of Radio Free Nalut. Now the news is all about the fighting. Colonel Gaddafi's spoken of in the past tense, and these Berber or Amazigh newsreaders tell us they no longer fear persecution. Since we liberated ourselves from the fallen regime, we are free to say whatever we want, play our music and even speak in our own language. Just down the corridor from the radio station was the Office of State Security and Intelligence. Locals tell us the officers controlled everything on the radio. One wrong word, one politically controversial interview could get you punished. All the songs had to be about Gaddafi and all the broadcasts had to be about the Green Book. We couldn't get around the rules. If you made a mistake, they'd take you to jail straight away. When protesters broke into the offices in the first week of the uprising in mid-February, they found hundreds of files on the people of Nalut. They burned most of them, keeping only these old ones as a reminder. On Ali Salah Shabak's laptop is an archive of the Nalut uprising, images never before broadcast. A town mobilized in protest. And then on the 20th of February, a pivotal moment, a monument to Gaddafi's Green Book, his self-penned political and social blueprint that's controlled the lives of Libyans for more than three decades, felled. It was the equivalent of Saddam Hussein's statue coming down in Baghdad. This is central Nalut today, a town that has broken completely with Gaddafi. The local police joined the people in the uprising, even some members of the secret police took the opposition side. And the ones who didn't and who weren't from around here, well, they left town. But the price they have to pay for freedom is vigilance. In the mountain lookouts around Nalut, opposition fighters cannot relax for an instant. They captured a border crossing with Tunisia, and Gaddafi wants it back. Anita McNaught, Al Jazeera, in the Nafusa Mountains of Western Libya.